go ahead and get to the TNA reaction show. So I gotta say, so they they did um, they did this taping in um, in Newport, Kentucky, which is like a suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio. So I think that's a little bit confusing for people if you don't know the dynamic. There's like this river that kind of separate not separates, but there's you know a river right there in between Cincinnati, and then when you go over the bridge, there's there's Kentucky, right? Um, I've actually been to Cincinnati and went to the Great American Ballpark to see the Reds play one time. Um, I think I paid like twelve bucks and was supposed to be up way up high, but I snuck down. It was like a Wednesday night game or something like that. I remember uh, I was uh, I was in a Dayton, Ohio for training and uh, and we ended up uh, renting a van and <laughs> like a bunch of us, a bunch of us like one night on the school night went down to went over to Cincinnati to go check out the Reds play, but um, which was that's a beautiful ballpark, by the way. Um, and so I got a little bit of that experience there. But I think we were there for like all we were there for a long time anyway. Um, so yeah, they were in Newport, Kentucky, and last over the weekend, I think Lou D'Angeli sent out a tweet, um, with a picture of the crowd, and this picture sent everybody up in a frenzy, and it was basically like a Rorschach test. Um, if you were a reasonable person that can count and can actually look like, or at least like give a good estimate of how many people were there, you could tell there was like 200 people in that bar and they didn't really sell hardly any of the balcony seats. It was all floor seats. And um, he sent that out and I, I said it was time for them to move to a studio. And in fact, AEW is doing that with Collision. Like, I know it's not a technically a studio, but it's going to be a fixed location in a place that's reminiscent of a studio. It's an esports e stadium, but the way that they're going to have it set up, it's going to be like, like a like a pseudo studio wrestling style, but kind of more souped up, right? And I was like, I said that's a smart idea. Collision's not selling tickets, and in fact, they're going around renting these buildings and they're losing their ass. They should move to a fixed location and cut down on travel costs. They can have all their stuff right there in that same city. Um, going live every week, probably not going to be helpful to their ticket sales. They should probably with TNA does go live one, one week in a month. Um, but they, uh, yeah, so, so that's what they're doing. I was just like, you know, it's time for TNA to move to full sale. Right. And somebody's like, why this place is, this place is jam packed. I'm like, brother, that's 200 people in a bar. And when we get to the TV, they're just going to be looking off into the abyss. You're going to have like a row of people, and then behind them is going to be darkness, right? It just doesn't look good on television. It really does. And then, of course, they're not that loud, right? I think they got up for certain moments, but for the most part, a lot of those folks are just sitting on their hands, and it just makes it difficult to watch. Uh, it's not fun. I th it's It's been long. I mean, it's been enough time to where – you know, we need we need them to move to a fixed location. If they can't move to full sale because of the cost, I think that that you know eventually they need to work out a deal with like the Palms. And I know that like, <clears throat> you know, I I was on here talking about how you know at Hard to Kill they did sixteen hundred, and then the night after they did twelve hundred, and the Rebellion was like twelve hundred, and then the night after was, you know, under eight hundred. But even the tapings where they were like under eight hundred people, or it was like right around eight hundred people, it still looked really good. And they were still up for it. And that's a tourist town. So if they can get something like the Palms or, you know, a place in Vegas where there's a, a high traffic for tourism and they can, you know, they have their local market that they can pull from, but they can always advertise to tourists who are just kind of passing by. You could probably get, you know, five, 600 people for every show and make it look good on television. I think that's, I think that's the way to go. Cause I was watching this show and I was like, man, like nothing against, you know, Cincinnati. And people are saying, well, Cincinnati's not a hot wrestling town. Okay. Then why did why did they go? Why? People are blaming Cincinnati. It's like, well, they've been to that same venue before and they had these same issues where they're only getting a couple hundred people and it looks like crap on television. Like you're staring into the abyss, right? And nobody's making noise. They knew that going in. And they could and they had a lot more room to put people in, but they just didn't have the people. Despite the fact that they sent out some of their lower ranking stars, <laughs> they had some, well, you know, Trey Miguel and Sam McCallahan, and I think uh, Jason Hotch and a couple other people went to a, a Reds game and uh, were part of the festivities there. And, and they still only got like 200 people. 
It's like, well, why, 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 why did they go then? So it makes makes no sense to me. But they want to. But, but some of the fans they want to put the heat on TNA. They want to put the heat on the fans. It's like, no, don't put the heat on the fans. They would have went if TNA would have done a better job giving them something to watch. That's all, and that's where I always go back to. It's not never never blame the city for not showing up. You blame the promotion for not doing a good enough job promoting, for not getting people out there to get to the show. That's that's all it is. It's not the city's fault, right? You you know where you're going ahead of time. And especially when it's a place that they've they've been to that place a few times before. It's not the first time they've ran Newport, Kentucky. Um they know how to promote that market. At least I think they do, but they just don't either. They don't do it. They don't have the resources to do it or, or they just don't feel like it's worth it to actually get out there and hustle. They tried with that Reds game thing, but they didn't bring out Moose and Jordan Grace and, and Joe Hendry and, uh, you know, Matt Hardy. They, they took out, you know, nobody with any title belts, right? It's just some local stars from Dayton. They, they brought out, and what did they get them? 200 people in a bar. Swig of coffee for Newport. So I just didn't think the show looked very good on television. And it made it to be a difficult watch. Not that the content was bad, just was a, was a difficult thing to watch. 